Um, our next speaker, Grover Norquist, is president of Americans for Tax Reform, a taxpayer advocacy group he founded in 1985. And ATR's mission is described as to limit the size and cost of government, oppose higher taxes at the federal, state, and local levels, and support tax reform. Um, ATR is particularly well known for its taxpayer protection pledge, uh, which asks all candidates for federal and state office to commit themselves in writing to the American people to oppose all tax increases. Uh, Grover is the author of three books, including his latest, Debacle, Obama's War on Jobs and Growth, and What We Can Do Now to Regain Our Future, which makes for an interesting juxtaposition against this title. <laughs> um, he has a long record of service on boards, commissions, and campaigns, and I can't resist repeating an encomium I, I saw to Grover on his webpage from one of my favorite writers and observers, P.J. O'Rourke. And Grover, I'm sorry if this has been used a thousand times in introducing you, but it's just such a great line. Uh, Grover Norquist is Tom Paine crossed with Lee Atwater, plus a, just a soupçon of Madame Defarge. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Grover Norquist. Thank you. When I am introduced with that quotation, people often say smidgen because they're not sure how to pronounce <laughs> soupçon. They get all the way to the end and then they come up with another word. Um, a couple of thoughts. One, that look, obviously, uh, growth is central to the internet <clears throat> and to the general economy. If we grew at 4% a year, Reagan uh, rates of growth over the next decade, instead of 2% a year, French or Obama rates of growth, um, you would <clears throat> we'd have $5 trillion more in revenue to the central government uh, over that decade. Uh, so people who talk about raising taxes, um, you know, how are you going to get $5 trillion which would slow the economy down as opposed to having pro-growth policies, both governor, government revenues and employment are better off with uh, growth policies. Uh, I think there are areas of uh, possible agreement where we can work together. Uh, we heard uh, Congressman Scalise talk about uh, united uh, bipartisan opposition to inter international governance of the internet, of uh, taking over uh, the, the present structure. Um, I think immigration. Uh, is important not just to internet companies, companies that work on the internet, but to the entire uh, economy. Uh, we're beginning to see some movement in that uh, direction uh, all the way around. Uh, we saw Steve Jobs explaining how many factories he could open in the United States uh, if President Obama would support uh, high-tech immigration, and President Obama explained his lack of interest in that, and Steve Jobs explained his analysis of Obama's mental capacity. Um, we have the capital gains tax, which is going in the opposite direction. Terribly important uh, to all startup industries, to, um, uh, to all growth-based uh, industries. Uh, the European average, OECD, average capital gains tax is 16%. We used to be at 19.1%. We are now uh, up at 27.9% uh, on cap gains. Again, the OECD is at 16% average. The uh, <clears throat> South Korea is at zero. Switzerland's at zero. It doesn't help when we handicap ourselves in this way, trying to move forward. Uh, we're all more familiar with the, uh, with the corporate uh, income tax handicap that we put on uh, uh, the in all industries in the United States at 35% plus the state uh, corporate income taxes for about 39% average compared to the 25% in Europe, again, 25% OECD average. You know, dumber than France is not where we want to be on, uh, on these tax approaches. Uh, education reform, I think, is interesting, but the idea that we're going to have the federal government, a central monopoly, tell 50 states that they can't be 50 monopolies is probably the wrong way to go. I'd much rather go uh, to uh, school choice and parental choice moving bottom up, having more competition among schools rather than having the, the, the monopoly that is the federal government uh, jump in there. Uh, and one of the things that we've been uh, faced with is the threat to the internet and I think to the American economy that is the idea of uh, getting rid of nexus requirements for taxation as a way of going after internet sales, uh, putting sales taxes on internet sales. This is the third panic we've had. The first panic when we were going to order our ham sandwiches and our cars and our houses uh, over the out of catalogs, uh, and the sales tax would disappear as a revenue for uh, state and local governments, and so we had to 
uh, break nexus, which the courts didn't allow. Uh, then the next uh, threat came from uh, that everything was going to be services instead of uh, 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 products, and therefore the sales tax was going to disappear a second time. Uh, and then the third time is that all sales were going to be over the internet, uh, and uh, sales tax revenue would disappear in the United States. Uh, there's a very real challenge to this idea of, of taxing the internet. Not only is it sticking uh, taxes on top of electronic commerce, uh, and the idea that fairness requires this. If you buy $100 worth of books in Utah, uh, you pay a 6% tax if, at the local store. Uh, if you buy it uh, over the internet, uh, the traveling cost, the shipping cost is more than $6 to do that. Uh, the, uh, uh, unless you're dealing with very expensive cameras and very expensive furniture, the transportation costs swamp uh, the tax advantages. And I, I'm not buying the argument that some of the uh, 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 brook it, bricks, and mortar, uh, brick and, bricks and mortar companies put forward. The drivers of this effort are not just going after the sales tax. And people who think this is just about the internet sales tax need to look several steps ahead. The real goal is uh, to go after uh, corporate and individual income taxes across state lines. Uh, when the advocates of tax on the internet were offered, well, we could support this, said some of the Fortune 500 companies, if we had a protection against business activity taxes across state lines, and they were told, you silly person, you're the target. This other is just step one. You're the guys with the money. We want to be able to tax across state lines and break down nexus on corporate uh, and individual income taxes, corporate being uh, more interested. So this, this is a, a direct attack on uh, tax competition between the states. You're going to see loser states trying to get out front to be able to export their taxes to all the people who are leaving their states, either through the sales tax or through corporate and individual income taxes. Um, and th this is step one in um, in, a in an effort not just to tax sales taxes on the internet, but across the board. And at Americans for Tax Reform at ATR.org, uh, we're announcing today the expansion of a campaign to protect against cross-border taxation. We had a whole revolution against no taxation without representation. State legislators and mayors love the idea of taxing people in other states who can't vote against them. Okay, it's like the federal government taxing Puerto Rico or something. I mean, they just, just think that it's a great idea to be able to go after people who can't vote against you. I think it's, uh, it's extremely dangerous. Uh, we also see it in related fields with taxes placed on rental cars and hotels, which cities and towns think are taxes on the other, taxes on people who don't live here and can't vote against me. The fact that New York voters then go to Los Angeles and get looted when they rent a car or, or stay at a hotel by Los Angeles taxes, and the Los Angeles guys go to New York for the weekend and they get hit. Everybody's a loser and everybody thinks they're exporting their taxes. They're trying to play the same game uh, with the internet sales tax and again, the ultimate target of expanding income taxes also across state lines and, and trying to break down nexus. So um, I think tax competition is an incredibly important process, both internationally and between the states. The internet sales tax drive is a attack on tax competition and much more damaging to the economy than the static loss to several hundred thousand guys who make a living, living selling stuff at eBay. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Robert.